Good morning. It's Fish, your Beach Bum Investor for the 23rd of March, 2018. Happy Friday. Let's have a look at the markets and see how they're looking. Hey, I've got a couple of bits of news to get through today from NLC2, who I've, uh, I've had contact with RAF for a long time now. Pivex, of course, got some updates there. And also for Icon, ICX, since last time we spoke anyway. Been off for a couple of days, just fixing up the house, almost done now. All right, going to pop over to chat and see who's in. Z's first. Etherset, how you been, man? Good to see you. Andre, good day. How's things? All right, BP Junkie, what's going on? I'll be back on Discord today too, guys. I've got to wrap up that uh, Gladius investment. So if you are in the uh, group ICO, please contact me with your Ether wallet address for the Gladius token. King Azul. What's up? How are you? All right, so a couple of things to get onto before we have a look at the market. First and foremost, I just want to do a bit of housekeeping with PivX. Uh, yeah, nice ICX pump going on, absolutely, King is all. And we'll get onto that in a second. There is a reason for that. For those of you who aren't aware, it uh, had some pretty big announcements regarding listings over the last couple of days. So first and foremost, quick, quick housekeeping uh, with PivX. There's a bit of an announcement as well, but it was in our roadmap for 2018. And that is, is that we're working our way towards uh, ZPOS, which is ZPIV staking. For those of you who do have a PIVX wallet, you will probably have ZPIV and understand at this stage, you cannot stake it, but we're working towards that. Now that's coming up very, very, very soon. So I'm just gonna pop over the screen share with you an article, which I will, I forgot to put these into the link to the, uh, the links for these articles in today, but I will do that after I've finished the show. So let's have a quick look. Pop down here. Okay. And PivX, wallet update, convert to ZPIV, a version one to PIV uh, to prepare for ZPOS. Okay. So the main thing here, guys, is that the ZPIV you need to exchange that back into PIV within your wallet. So if you are running a wallet and you do have ZPIV, um, I'll just read this bit here. Any ZPIV minted with Core Wallet 3.0.6 and below will not be qualified for ZPIV staking. So it's not at risk. It's just that when we do switch over, you're not going to be able to stake ZPIV now. So you're best off exchanging that back into regular PIV. Um, and uh, waiting for the, the switch to happen, which happens in uh, late March, early April, uh, and will not be able to be backed up uh, with the deterministic seed. We recommend that you convert your existing ZPIV to PIV before it's temporarily disabled on March 29th and remint to ZPIV using the new wallet 3.1.0 once ZPIV version two is activated on April 7th. There we go. So to ensure you can receive all of the new benefits. So that's, that's the big thing, guys. I will put out a video on how to change your ZPIV into PIV, and everyone needs to do that by March 28th. So we've got about five days to do it. Uh, if you need any help with that, I'll be back on Discord now, so um, just let me know. Um, okay, I'm not gonna stop the screen share, come back to the chat. Uh, stop. And I'm back. Yeah. Long time no speak. Had a quick catch up over at uh, Discord, but haven't spoken to Zhao in a while. Z, Floyd. <laughs> yeah, so that was one of the bits of uh, news coming out. Now, as who was it that uh, King Azul said, there was a nice ICX pump, and um, there is a reason for that, and that's the ICX, the Korean Ethereum that we've been into since ICO, has actually uh, been announced on a couple of Korean exchanges. So that's obviously pretty bullish news and, and the ICX price has reflected that in the last couple of days with a really, really nice spot bounce back. Um, so let me just show you a quick article we found on that um, about, about the ICX listing on the Korean exchanges. And I will bring you back over to, over to screen share. Sorry, skipping all over the place today. Okay. So Icon, ICX price spikes with news, a bit thumb, up bit listing, KW, KRW pair. So obviously huge news. Let's have a quick look at the article. Icon has soared a strong win with, uh, sorry, has scored a strong win with Korean one tr 
uh, trading on South Korea's two largest exchanges. Cryptocurrency is a borderless technology, but ICON is still much more tightly geographically bound than most, with an initial goal of hyper-connecting individuals, businesses, and entire industries around South Korea. Despite this, it's previously suffered from a lack of fiat currency trading pairs and no listings on Korean exchanges. According to CoinMarketCap, over 90% of the daily trade volume has typically been on Binance with BTC about 80% and Ether about 14%. Now, news has broken of its first fiat pairing uh, with confirmed listings on Korean one pairings, uh, sorry, and Korean one pairings on South Korea's two largest exchanges by volume, Upbit and Bitthumb. Prices rallied in the week leading up to the announcements as rumors swelled, followed by a pronounced leap in the hour following the official announcements. So that's the reason for the ICX price for those of you who haven't been keeping up to date with the announcements in the last couple of days um, and, and weeks for PIVX, going back to that ZPIV thing. But yeah, there, there usually is a reason for spikes like that. Um, and that's great news for ICON because I think that a vulnerability is only being listed on one exchange. I think PIVX had that vulnerability for a while before we, of course, got listed to, to Binance, um, increasing our major exchange availability. We were you know, available on a lot of smaller exchanges like CoinSpot, and we've been added to Wall of Coins as well, people, for those for those of you interested in, in the fiat pairings. I believe it's Wall of Coins. So you know, PIVX's availability obviously increasing quite a bit, but uh, good, to see that, um, good to see that Icon are actually making moves to get wider availability as well. Z's ask, has it hit uh, normal BitThumb or is it still just on BitThumb Pro? I'm not sure, mate. I'd have to double check on that. Have to have a look, Z. Getting on to the, um, I'll just get on to another bit of news that I found going back to No Limit Coin. One that we've sort of gone in and out of, as you guys know, I'm not huge on gambling, but, you know, I really liked Raf. I had a, I met him in a, when I was asked to do an interview on another crypto channel and we ended up having a two and a half hour interview with the host over there. And I got along really well with Raf. And we talked about the intricacies of uh, fantasy sports and whether it's gambling or not. <laughs> um, but he's a, he's a good guy. Um, and funnily enough, they've, they've come up with a really, really cool idea. The funny thing about this is I actually got in contact with Raf and pitched this idea to him. And when I did, he said, Fish, we're actually working on it right now. Now, if we go back to, I'll go back to my Slack and I'll find out the data when I sent that message to him because the next day on the YouTube channel, I told you guys, oh, guys, NLC2 are working on something pretty cool. And so for those of you interested in what happened with NLC2, why there was a significant increase in that price in the last couple of days, they announced something that in my eyes is quite clever. And I can say that because I pitched it to them. They did have the idea before me, having said that. They were already working on it. But yeah, I, I told you guys they were working on something I saw as pretty cool. Um, and this is what, what we're actually talking about. So I'll just pop back to screen share again. Have a look what uh, NLC2, the fantasy sports coin, fantasy sports on the blockchain have done. The thing I like about NLC2, look, I, I personally see anything that you can lose, lose money at, like sports wise, I think that's sort of gambling. So for me, it's like something I don't actively own because I'm a bit conflicted on it, but you know I do like RAF and I think that on blockchain is a better way to go. So um, this is what NLC2 done. They've, they've announced uh, fantasy crypto trading, which I think is awesome. So no limit coin, NLC2 to teach a new gener generation of crypto traders with fantasy sports. Uh, no, no limit have come up with an innovative way to teach people how to use cryptocurrency. This time it's through fantasy sports. Uh, interest in cryptocurrency trading has surged, but there's been no way for a newcomer to get familiar with trading without signing up for an exchange account and risking real money. High exchange fees also get in the way of people hoping to dip a toe into the markets. On the No Limit Fantasy Sports platform, users have the option of creating fantasy sport teams uh, for, for the usual sports, American football, soccer, cricket, and so on, but they also create a fantasy crypto portfolio. Users can draft cryptocurrencies into their virtual portfolios and play contests against other players. The portfolio, which accumulates the most, is given uh, given time as 
uh, sorry, in a given time is rewarded with the platform's NLC2 token. I won't go on, you guys get the idea. Cryptocurrency fantasy trading, pick your cryptos. We kind of did a bit of that when we first started the um, Crypto Wave Investment Crew, just for a bit of fun and to keep us on our toes. We sort of, we put up like one PIV or two PIV to whoever, you know, pick the best crypto for the week, best gains on a crypto. Um, our rules were a little complicated, which sort of, which sort of made it die in the bum. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was a really cool idea. Looks good to me. Okay, cool. Z's just said that um, it released to Pro First, BitThumb Pro First, talking about ICX, and that plebs might not be buying it yet. <laughs> Could be pumped again if so. Joey's in. Fish, should we expect you at the regular time again? I'll bring back the blue collar crypto show. Follow Fish. Not tonight, sadly. Girlfriend has friends over. Uh, Joe live in the living room ain't going to happen. <laughs> no, no worries, Joey. Yeah, I'll come back at the regular time, man. That's that's my aim. I may not do seven days a week anymore, but I'll try and keep it to at least five. And I'll probably more often than not be on on the weekend and take those days off during the week because I noticed that most people take the time off during the weekend. So I'll, I'll try and be contrarian. <laughs> Oh, I did you, Jiao? Yeah, Jiao said, interesting, because I got contacted by Portuguese Fantasy Sports ICO to enter the team. That's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's um, that's good news, I reckon, for NLC too. It's clever. Markets to be, you know, straight to the, straight to the target market. It'd be fun too. It'd, it'd, it'd tempt me. Can I use my... Can I consider it using my um, skill and therefore not gambling? Probably not. <laughs> Fish is tardy sauce. Why am I tardy sauce? It's 11 a.m. Like quarter past 11, same time as usual. Or do you guys want it an hour earlier? I don't care. I'll come back an hour earlier. I need to study the competitors. <laughs> yeah. I think you just keep an eye out for announcements coming up with that, Gia, because it'll be short term trading on those. I'm sure it'll be short term trading on those those trading competitions. So, be interesting to see. Anyway, I'm going to pop over to um, going to pop over to Coin Market Cap and see what the market's actually doing. I haven't really had a good look at it. It's just looking for some interesting articles to discuss with you guys, and a couple of a couple of good ones there to start with. Let's have a look at coin market cap and see what's been happening. Okay, so it has been red in the last 24 hours. Nothing alarming though. Still holding a $332 billion market cap. Trade volume has dipped a little bit coming more into the weekend. Um, I think we could, you know, we had a pretty good run. So I think we could, could see a little bit of profit taking before the weekend. Um, we'll see what happens. Let's have a look. Yeah, the last hour has been red. And the last 24 hours, but you can see there spots of green in the in the uh, seven days. Bitcoin 5.3 percent. EOS has done really really well. There's actually going to be an airdrop uh, for EOS token holders. I uh, can't remember the name of the company, but it is a startup, and it's a startup that's doing an airdrop to EOS token holders, and that sent EOS's price up this week. For me, it's still a little overvalued for the stage of development. Although getting closer to somewhere where I can actually be happy with it, because I believe their mainnet is only like three three months away from launching, so we're getting closer, and we'll see how their mainnet goes when it launches. Just looking for anything that's been really positive, but here you can see Icon on the back of that news, fifty five percent moving into nineteenth spot on the market cap, um, starting to retrace with the rest of the market. Does look like an overall profit taking session. <laughs> as we head in towards the weekend. That's what it looks like to me. I wouldn't be surprised to see further retracements without going absolutely crazy into the charts. Verge has had a pretty good 24 hours, one of the few that's actually gone buck the trend. Um, I've actually sold out of most of my Verge. I, I just thought it was overpriced to the stage it got to when it was, you know, it's certainly got potential, but I bought it at half a cent because it had potential. So I sold a lot of it when it ran up to sort of 15 cents. Um, I don't know exact prices, but I sold a lot of it along the way. 
Um, and I recently on the downturn said, do I really want that or do I really want Pivx? And I looked at where they're sitting on the, the market, like where they're sitting on the their respective market caps. And I actually think Pivx is undervalued compared to Verge's market cap. I think we should be, at, you know, in terms of privacy, like I don't think even Verge developers would be, uh, they'd be willing to admit that we're ahead of them with privacy. And in terms of working as um, a network and allowing applications to be built on it, Verge has still got a, a long way to go on that as well. So for mine, I just think that the market caps are probably the wrong way around, or at least, you know, Pivx should be certainly a lot closer to Verge. So I swapped a lot of my Verge into Pivx. No disrespect to, to the Verge team and, and everything like that. I did hold through a lot of the storm. Um, although I did sell out on the way up and traded a lot as well. Anyway, uh, let's get on. Verge doing well and kicking back 10%. Steam is one that I think um, is probably undervalued at the moment because it's got use case. It's got a, a working platform with people blogging on there all the time. So I think they've got a real first mover's advantage into the crypto uh, social media space. And I think that 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 is going to be a growing space going forward. So I think Steam's going to be perhaps a market leader. And at $2.09, more importantly, at a $532 million market cap, we've got real, I speak about this all the time, but we do have real world um, online platforms that we can compare valuations with. Now, Steam's not even close to Reddit at the moment, but I see that you know as potentially being the case in the near future. Um, not not definitely there, but as I've suggested before, I don't think 20% valuation of Reddit is out of the question, which would put this at about $1.2 billion. So I, I can see that happening, which means there's a, for me, there's almost a two and a half X right there, um, say 140%, uh, sorry, 240%, no, 140%, sorry. <laughs> So that's uh, that's one I'm I'm liking at the moment. Although I haven't really been blogging over there, just because I look. I'm, but I'm not a social media person. I'm never on Facebook. I'm never on Twitter. <laughs> I'm very rarely on Discord these days. So you guys know that. Not not huge on keeping in contact that way. Although I will be back on Discord now. Just having a look for any other really impressive performers. We've got Loopring. I'd heard a lot of chatter about this. Forty eight percent in the last seven days. Um, but I haven't actually investigated the project myself. A lot of people talking about it. Continuing down. See how some of these lower market cap coins are going. The funny thing is the market cap, like it used to be like 16 million when I first got in to get into the top 100. So it's getting a lot harder uh, to get into that top 100 as we see more coins come in. Oh, Vertcoin's had a good rally in the last 24 hours, up 12.89%. But uh, as more coins come into the market, the, the, you know, the market, the overall market cap is diluting between more coins. Um, so even though you know, we've seen such a significant increase in the overall market cap since I got in, um, maybe some of the top coins haven't benefited as much as some of these new coins. That's the funny trend. Substratum's down a reasonable amount. Like this was, I think this peaked at $3. During the crazy, crazy bull runs where everything was getting overpriced for stage development, but Substratum has potential in my opinion. We'll see what happens. At least they didn't run off with the money. You know, they set up offices and got to work as soon as they took a what was a, a good amount at ICO. Um, this is one that um, for those of you who are invested in Gladius, I haven't checked the price recently, but I know when I did check it, we were down off what we bought it at at ICO. Um, for those of you concerned about that. Substratum is one that we bought at, I think it was either, I think it was, two, I think it was six cents that we bought it at at ICO and it actually dipped down to about four and a half cents. Um, so we, we were down, you know, 25%, maybe 20% on our um, original investment. And, you know, now we've held on to it through that time and we're 7x. So... I don't know. I don't know if there's any correlation between that and Substratum. I'm just, uh, sorry, that and Gladius. I'm just saying that because they are two cryptos using shared resources to create a network for an actual use case. So Substratum being web hosting, Gladius being uh, DDoS attacks. 
So let's have a quick look at Gladius actually, see where it's sitting. I can't remember the exact price we paid for it at ICO, but that would be lower. That might even be down sort of half. Where's it trading at the moment? I think it's only trading on a couple of the decentral, uh, KuCoin. Okay, yeah, it got listed on KuCoin. So that was a, I forgot about that actually. Yeah, Gladius got listed on KuCoin. So um, it's off, you know, it was just listed on the decentralized exchange. Good to see it listing on KuCoin. Um, Just having a look here. Sorry. I'll go back to it. Yeah. Just have a quick look at the chart, but I think it spiked and it's been down trending. So if it's one that you were interested in getting in on ICO, uh, I believe this is well below ICO price. Goodness, it traded up there for a while. But yeah, no, this is below, I'm sure this is below ICO price. So if it's one that you like, um, look, there is a video going back a, a couple of months on this channel where we actually interviewed the CTO. So if you can, you can get an idea of what the team's aiming to do, but uh, basically creating a ne network to counter DDoS attacks, something like Cloudflare and um, Akamai, I think is the other one that do that. Both big companies. So I think they're, there's some opportunity there. Q-Link's trading down at 10 cents as well. That's another one that um, we got into an ICO. It did spike to $1.30 um, and it's down at 10 cents. So if you want something that's trading well below its all-time highs, which I think still has really good potential. I mean, they've got a base station coming out in fourth quarter. I'll have to check in with the team and see how close they are with actually the full network. But uh, I think it's uh, it's getting to a stage where it might be buy time again. All right, let's see who's in. Superheart.org, long time no see. IOST and TRX for 2018 is Superheart.org's big. Joe says, as I understand, any blockchain-related crypto could possibly adopt a lightning network. Want to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, 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 as far as I understand, that's the case, Joe. It's open, it's open source, open source um, software, mate. As far as I'm aware. Etherstep likes $30 and $50 for ICX. Thinks it's going to have a good 2018. <laughs> She <laughs> said the number one rule of the crypto wave investment crew is never sell icon. How much of the bloody icon economy do we own? We must be close to 1% between us. I think most people have been stocking up on the lows. I got some more at $1.70. Joe <laughs> Jo said Bitcoin dark pumped on the day Bitcoin private launch. Do you surprise? I'm surprised either of them have got Oh, I shouldn't be so harsh on Bitcoin Dark, but I'm assuming it's, you know, nothing that a bunch of altcoins aren't doing a whole lot better. It's just that they've decided to go with the name Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin Private, I'm really not a fan of, Joe. I don't know if you ever saw the, um, if you ever watched any of those videos, that I watched, I just can't, I can't understand how it, 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 I think it spiked to like a $1.2 billion valuation at one stage, considering the coin price and, and the circulating supply. And this is something that was literally plucked out of thin air in December. Yes, the guy's made a coin before, but he also deserted that coin in Z Classic. And what, what have they done to the bloody Z Classic community that were hardcore Z Classic? Like it's it's crushed that project, absolutely crushed it, completely abandoned now. So, cash grab number two for Rhett, for Rhett Creighton, and he's done pretty well. He's grabbed a shitload of cash. Well done to you, if that's your objective. But yeah, I don't like those things, man. The forks that just call themselves just fork and call yourself something else if you've got a good idea. That's what I reckon. <laughs> Kirai 
So, damn, haven't been on your stream for a while, Fish. Good to see you. I haven't been streaming, man. I've been over in Japan. Been over snowboarding, <laughs> snowboarding and, and checking out Japan. So, yeah, I haven't been streaming. Good to be back. Wen Chain. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, Joe sort of agrees. He said, oh, yeah, oh yeah, the whole mess with Z Classic and Bitcoin Private is a joke. He's a cash grabber. I think he pumped Bitcoin Dark for the fun of it. Oh, did, was he involved with that? I don't know. I have no idea whether he's involved with that as well. But I just think the guy, like, if you go back, I, I feel like making a reaction video to one of the dev, like the, the conferences that Rhett Creighton did on Bitcoin Private because it is the biggest waste of time. I've ever seen and it just shows you how unprepared he was and how he, he's just moving quickly because this is an opportunity it's a it's a window of opportunity that's not going to be open forever where you can release a home page with a thing saying we're going to make a trading bot and it's going to read signals and give us trading tips for the crypto economy and raise three million dollars anonymously now they made that trading bot, and I'm talking about crypto ping for those of you not in, for those of you who who are not aware. But you know, days of things like that, days of people falling for things like BitConnect and Devorcoin, and the days of people getting excited and actually buying coins for forks that don't mean shit, and airdrops that are crap. It, it, it's a it's a window of opportunity that's only small. It's still there. Red Creedence just proven it. Still plenty of people buying whatever. But to me, it has it it has little current value, and I'd have to check out the rest of the development team to understand the the long term value of, of Bitcoin private. But my understanding is is that Bitcoin itself are looking to implement privacy protocols. So what do we need Bitcoin private for? Why don't those devs just help the core team implement privacy on Bitcoin? Stupid. Hourglass, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, still big on ICX for sure, Kiro. I was just saying, like, we, <laughs> it's like uh, Jiao just said that the first rule of crypto wave investment crew is never speak bad about ICX. I don't know that we're that brainwashed, but look, honestly, we probably would own, I don't know, we'd, we'd own a lot of that economy because we got into it at ICO. And uh, uh, look, a lot of our members went the full 30, 30 ether allow like the full 30 ether and you were getting two and a half thousand icx per ether at ico so we've got a lot <laughs> and like i know for, like i know for a fact wilkie has more ico now than he bought it i like sorry more icon than he bought at ico he's stocked up on it bigger and bigger and bigger thinks it's going to be massive Dry good spell weaver, good to be back. Good to see you. How things be? I haven't even been in the Discord group in about a month. I had a quick brief run in there to talk to Zhao about something. But yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of messages to get back to and a lot of catching up to do. I have no doubt about it. My surfing hasn't haven't been surfing as much either, so I've put on like a lot of weight. Fortunately, my first competition because the Commonwealth Games are coming up, just down here by the way. Like I literally skateboard down to where the beach volleyball is. So cruise down there on the skate, you have to walk down. It's one and a half kilometers away, if that. So like one mile. Um, but yeah, it's with that coming up, of um, the April competition has been delayed a little bit, which is good. So I've got some time to get myself into shape for competition this year. Yeah, I think that's, that's um, like dry good spell weaver. I was saying on my last stream, that's been the best thing I did. Funnily enough, I came back in the market that absolutely tanked. But taking some time off and just, you know, taking some of that profit, going to Japan. Thanks again to Wilkie for shouting this to the trip. You big well. Um, doing some snowboarding, just spending some time off the markets. It can be a really good reset for you. And if you're not if you're not over invested, it's easy enough to do that and saying, well, whatever it is, when I get back is what it's going to be when I get back. But Wilkie and I didn't perform one trade while we we're in Japan. We were over there for a couple of weeks. We checked the markets once every day, maybe, just to see what was happening, but stayed off stayed off the tech pretty much. 
Superhot.org is very, very big on IOST and Tron. What's IOST? I don't, I can't remember. Don't even know if I know what it is. Hourglass has said, I've been trying to learn how to chart graphs using Elliott Wave and a multitude of other theories. Going to start trading this BTC as extreme as I can. Pay taxes and do this shit right and rightly profit. Yeah, you got it. Pay your taxes. Easy. Easy. But yeah, Hourglass, if you're just getting into it, man, can I make a suggestion? Just start with small amounts while you're learning. Because everyone thinks that they can be a, like... It's like playing poker, right? You play poker with your mates for no money, just for the chips, and you win all the time, or you're, you're a superstar, or you play the free rolls and you're awesome. But let me tell you, when you're in a game that's got actual cheddar on the line, everyone pay, plays differently. And it's the same with trading. Everyone can go, oh, look how easy this is, and they sit there going, yeah, here's going to be support, here's going to be resistance, lines, here's the Elliott Wave theory, here's um, Fibonacci, you know, we'd set all this out, and I can pick the sports and resistance. When you've got money on the line, it becomes a different story. So if I can make one suggestion, if you are new to it, Hourglass, is just keep it small, man. Keep it small to start with. Prove yourself. Step it up gradually. I don't think anyone's ever regretted taking like a slower approach. A lot of people, like the, the stats are 90% of leverage traders, so people get into the day trading game. 90% uh, of traders lose 90% of their capital in 90 days. Um, so, yeah, just uh, keep it. Keep it small to start with. That's what I reckon. Nadio said, hey, man of mystery. How are you, Nadio? I'll give you a call, man. I've got your phone number as well. I was going to get back on Discord the other today. I haven't even been down to see, see the fam yet. Uh, Johnny Crypto, bear markets are good to learn more and develop projects and stay away from the markets of buying, uh, the, buying the dips. Yeah, cool. Uh, what do I think about credits, says Zabi Youssef. Uh, Zabi, I... The credits. I haven't looked into it. I'm sorry. Can't comment on that one. Uh, one million TSP, one million transactions per second, I think is what you're going for there, TPS. That's pretty cool. That's very, very quick. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's great. I'll have a look into it. Uh, if they're, they're claiming a million transactions per second, that's a crypto that actually puts us in the league of transactions we need for mass adoptions. It, it worked out, of, we did a show on it months and months and months ago, probably four or five months ago, when we were looking at Bitcoin Cash and the reason that increasing block sizes indefinitely is not a solution for scaling. So we actually looked heavily into transactions per second uh, and the fact that 100,000 transactions per second was really the minimum required amount to look for mass adoption is in, in terms of the everyday transaction medium. So if uh, Credits have got that up to a million transactions per second. That's fantastic. Good to see. Uh, cool, but I haven't actually looked at it to actually comment on whether, I, you know, whether I think the project's got potential. Uh, call me uh, Arj. Call me Arj. Okay, Arj. I have 1,262 ICX. How much do you think each coin will be worth by December realistically? Uh, can I give a top and bottom to that? Call me Arj. Uh, because it, it's difficult to, to, to pick the exact. Like the thing is, is that can I give a price that I think it'll reach like a low and a high end that I think it'll reach by December, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will be at that price in December. But yes, I think we can see bullish times again in the economy. It could certainly just settle down as people have lost interest a little bit. Um, the interest in crypto has certainly lagged from what it was in December last year. It doesn't mean we can't go on another rally. Some more exciting projects come to the floor. Um, I'm sure it, it can get the public interest again. But realistically, I think that ICX, I think you should see it. This is a huge range, but it's hard to tell exactly what crypto is going to do. So I think it should be anywhere between, because they have got like seven, is it seven projects already announced for this year coming onto the Icon Network? Uh, realistically, I think you're seeing a market cap of two, 2 billion as a minimum by the end of the year. So I'm not sure where that puts it at coin price. Just having a look. <laughs> Sorry, guys, on the run math. math. Uh, I can't remember what the 
it was 400 mil or 387 million. So call it 400 million ICX uh, with the with the two billion market cap means it's going to grow 50 percent minimum. That's that's guys. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You should only invest what you can afford to lose, and the price can go down. The Icon Network can fail and it can go to nothing. But I would think 50 percent roughly. Um, so that takes the coin price up to sort of 5.25. So minimum five dollars at a max. I think we'll hit 30 because I did some maths on that. Getting back to bullish times for the economy. One of these boards has the maths on it. There it is. So based on some figures, I pulled out of uh, some research papers. 31.3% of people in South Korea investing in crypto or having a holding in crypto, average spend of $5,000 um, and an, like an Ethereum-like dom dominance of 12.5% of the crypto economy in Korea. And that came to $30.73. So low end, I'd say $5.25. High end, I'd say $30.73. So I still think it's good investing at this stage. Having a look. <laughs> IOST is the future and Tron TRX is mainnet in a week. Oh, good to hear. I'm all in with the superheart.org foundation until 7th 4th, 2018, then LTC, LTC, LTC. Oh, it's good to hear Tron got that mainnet hitting. I hadn't heard about that. The smallest, uh, the smallest amount, shit, I'm not even trading real money yet, just counting the elite waves. Oh, good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so you're posting that up on Discord. Nice. Well, there's plenty of good traders. There's plenty of guys who can help you with that in the Discord group, as you're probably already finding out. But, yeah, I'll definitely check your progress. And when you do decide to actually end up turning that into money, just remember <laughs> the advice I gave. Keep it very small. Uh, teams of market manipulators will actually wait for pivotal market conditions where everyone expects something, then they move in the opposite direction with hundreds of millions uh, and feed of liquidations and stop losses from their move. Yeah, I, yeah, I, absolutely. My grandfather, like, I, I always thought he was nuts. He was probably the most, one of the most successful people anyway that I've ever actually met. But he always said to me when I was young and, I'd talk like I was interested in markets and that for a long time. I'd say, oh, this is moving, this is moving. He goes, oh, that's just the big boys playing with the markets. And I always thought he was just a nutbag old conspiracy theorist. Successful, but, you know, <laughs> um, turns out he was right <laughs> as, I, as I learned more about it. Just trying to catch up, guys, sorry. Okay, yeah, one million is theoretical. Um, in terms of credits, in terms of their 1 million transactions per second. Um, Visa has about 40,000. Oh, you're saying 4,000 per second. I thought it was more than that. Yeah, I thought it was like 100,000. No, 40,000. Yeah, I thought it was 40,000. Yes. Anyway. Uh, Curious asked an interesting one here. It's actually something that I'd sort of been pre-planning for already as well. And, and Curious said, safe to sell at the end of the year and watch the dip happen again, like in January or February, question mark. I, I think that's a great question. And it's something that I was seriously looking at. If it pumps again towards the end of this year, yeah. I think everyone's learned their lesson from this last bull run. Everyone knows what parabolic growth looks like now, like really unsustainable parabolic growth. And everyone's learned a little bit about, oh, I should have taken profit. And to that's the thing, like you, you learn through experience because you experience that pain of not selling out a Bitcoin at 20 grand. And if you're a trader, that is, and if you're interested in doing a bit of trading in, in your overall investment strategy, um, everyone's feeling a bit of the pain of not selling out at 20 grand and all the highs on the old coins, which we've now seen by as, you know, reduced by as much as 80% from all time highs. There's some of the old coins I'm talking about there. So, yeah, I think everyone's learnt a little bit from that and said, look, there's been a lot of discussion about, oh, look, next time there's 
a big bull run, I'm going to make sure I take some actual profit out. So I think there is a realization that, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for day to day trading, um, you know, a lot of people are, are trying to accumulate BTC and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that strategy. Um, trading in and out against BTC levels um, will quite often help you find the correct levels of support and resistance. But at a certain stage, if you, I, I think you've got to consolidate. And I think if you've made substantial amounts of money, it's no, no longer a point of, no, I'm just a hodler no matter what. That, that becomes silly at a certain point. You're actually risking, like you've got way too much of your, uh, your, your overall wealth, your personal wealth in crypto. What, what have I advised in the past? Like 10% of your overall wealth into crypto? You know, maybe you can go a bit more if you're younger and you can take a bit more risk, but like I, I stuck to that, guys. I'm sitting in an investment worth plenty of money and I, I have honestly probably less than 10% of what this place is worth in crypto. So um, it was sneaking over that, <laughs> definitely back in the bull runs of December, but as I said, I was taking some profit during that time as well. A really good question by Curai, and I think that if it does run up um, at any stage, during the year to really big highs again, I think more people will be looking for it. But yes, I again, that January, February uh, pattern, it, it's been repeated too often to ignore. So yes, I will be looking for it again in January, February. And it is important to, to plan your strategies that far in advance, absolutely. Yeah, see, dry gold, Spellweaver even agreed. He said, Kira, I think it's so consistent with crypto that it's worth missing out on three months of you know, potential gains to prevent a year of losses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if you make that bold move, it can actually turn your year amazing even on a, on a bad year because you hit it on the lows on you know, the end of February, early March. It doesn't get, you know, even if it doesn't go a whole lot higher for the year, it's, if, you, if you buy it at the, the dead bottom, you're doing well. Johnny Crypto says, one thing is testing other real conditions, uh, not EO, but high speed blockchains are a win bet for sure. <laughs> not EO, since, since you went away and tanked the market, thanks not EO. Yeah, it's, it's not Crypto Daily who's doing less videos and has 100,000 subscribers, it's Fish. And the 300 members of, of the Crypto Wave Investment Crew Without us, the market dies. <laughs> um, but yes, he says most of us moved and now live in tents. No, you're still Goldie. I won't say your suburb, but I want to give that away. I'm sure. Not yet. I've got some presents I've got to give to my nieces and nephew that I got them in Japan. So I'll be popping down that way soon. Catch up. Dennis Turk. Hi, Fish. Hi, Dennis. Oh, okay, cool. Nadia got into, um, he was just telling Jao that he got into ICO for credits and um, got half an ether in at restricted level. That's pretty cool. Call me Arj. Arj, uh, I haven't looked into cash, Q-A-S-H, but what we often do on this, this chat, mate, is we actually have a look at a coin together. So why don't we do that? Let's have a look at cash. Bring you over to screen share. We'll do a quick evaluation. You've obviously got to do a much more in-depth look at a coin before you're actually going to invest. This is just, yeah, you know, initial gut feeling, <laughs> let's call it. Very, very quick assessment. So let's have a look at cash. I have seen it appearing in the market cap and creeping up at, at times. I haven't tracked its progress heavily or the news from it because I'm not invested in it myself. But let's have a quick look and see how a cash is looking. All right, so first thing we need to know is fiat price is at 66 cents per coin. Uh, 7,713 BTC, Satoshi, and uh, 124,429 Vitalik's. The market cap's $231 million with a $5 million volume, uh, touching on $6 million. So reasonable, reasonable, uh, you know, sort of around the 2% mark, maybe just a little bit over for trade volume, 24-hour trade volume. I, I, I see that as fine. Circulating supply is about a third of the total supply, so I'd have to understand how these new tokens are actually being released or what, what the rest of the supply is actually represented by. 
Uh, let's have a quick look at the market. I tell you what, if you want to buy low it, and into a returning market, that chart actually looks pretty good. It looks like it's broken the downtrend there. Just, you know, let's call it five second analytics. Um, but way back in December when it launched on market or November, I don't know what price this was. If it went to ICO, we'll have to check all that sort of stuff. But we're looking at at lows of, what, 43 cents. We're not a whole lot above that at 66 cents. Yeah, 50%. And look, during the lows, it dropped down, but never actually never actually pierced those lines of, you know, first first day on market or first two days on market. So to me, that's, that's pretty bullish shines. Um, Again, I haven't even looked at the project yet. I'm doing five-minute analytics here, five-second analytics, not even five minutes. Let's have a quick look and see which markets it's available on. Cash, yeah, great availability. Look at this. All right, let's have a look. We got Huobi, uh, QN, Ethernex, Ethernex. Okay, I thought it was IDEX, a couple of decentralized exchanges. Cryptos with a Q. Not any of the major exchanges. So, okay, not, not as great a availability as that list initially made it look like. A lot of different trading pairs on some of these. Like, this is really adding a lot to, you know, to, to what it looks like it's listed on. So not great availability at this stage. Now, that can be an advantage if you're looking to bargain hunt. Um, and quite often you can see... You know, we've seen what happened to Icon as it became available on two big Korean exchanges. So hunting those coins down off some more obscure exchanges or some less popular exchanges can actually be profitable. Can also go the other way. So please do your research based on the, the market cap and circulating supply um, rather than coin price and where it's listed. Is this a reasonable valuation for the current stage of development? Well, let's go and have a quick look. Okay, providing liquidity to the non-liquid crypto economy. One cash is equal to 0 0.001 Ether, successfully raised 350 million cash at the token sale. That's cool. You can see here, one of the first things you do guys is actually download that, um, download that white paper up here. Yeah, so I won't do my email address publicly, but um, there you go. You can sign up and get the, the latest updates, which is a great, great little thing there. The safety of your token is our utmost priority. That's why all cash tokens can only be purchased with a crypto's account. Okay, that's interesting. Each day, more and more token issues are experiencing cyber attacks, hacks, and impersonators, which have led to multi-million dollars worth of theft. This is because current ICO platforms do not have the proper security measures in place for purchases to deposit and transfer their funds. Deposits are typically transferred from one Ether address to another without proper KYC checks, often using a sim single publicly announced address for purchases to send their funds. Hackers and scammers take advantage by posting fake Ether addresses on forums and unsuspecting token purchases end up transferring cryptos into hackers' addresses. To ensure this does not happen with cash token sale, we have placed stringent preventative measures to ensure a safe, secure, and compliant process for all token participants by carrying out our token sale only through our secure ICO and trading platforms, cryptos. Okay, so there's a couple of videos here. How long are they? Two minutes. Right, when Bitcoin first appeared in 2009, only a few visionaries understood a disruptive shockwave was about to hit the financial industry. In just eight years, Bitcoin's value has gone from zero to 70 billion, and the market cap of all crypto tokens combined is now over 140 billion. Thousands of individuals, businesses, and even industries have emerged, building their entire foundations on these decentralized crypto ecosystems. However, one fundamental element has been overlooked. That is liquidity. A company can have the largest asset base and the best run business, but if it runs out of liquidity, it is in trouble. Welcome to Liquid, a platform built to provide liquidity to the non-liquid crypto economy. Liquid is built by coin, 
a successful and profitable company with an impeccable reputation and financial industry pedigree. Our trading platforms and exchanges are the most advanced in the world with annual transactions over USD 12 billion. The Liquid platform is comprised of two core pillars. World Book offers a multi-market order book that aggregates the world's various liquidity sources into a single highly liquid tradable order book and supports trading in the quote currency of one's choice. It is built on top of Coin's existing matching engine, smart order routing, and cross-currency conversion engine technologies. Prime Brokerage offers direct market access, DMA, fiat management, crypto fiat credit facility, and trading tools which facilitates liquidity. Cash is the token that powers all services provided by Liquid and is poised to become the preferred token across upcoming and existing financial services as they migrate to decentralized platforms. The crypto economy is the way to economic freedom and Liquid Cash is your ticket. Register today to cash in. No? Oh. What's this one? It's, I mean, that wasn't super informative, was it? I, I, I mean, I kind of get the idea. Let's have a look what this says. Liquidity, the lifeblood of every industry, is the single most important element lacking in the crypto economy today. The only available resources of liquidity are uh, siloed across development markets that have standalone exchanges operating in closed pools of liquidity which are not available to non-residents. Emerging markets which are undeserved with with illiquid, sorry, emerging markets which are undeserved with illiquid local currencies that must interact with bigger liquidity pools to utilize crypto tokens in their home currencies. Okay, cool. Looks interesting. I like the fact that it's it's introducing a lot of more fiat pairings. That's something that that cert certainly needs to be done in uh, in the crypto economy. Hopefully on ramps and off ramps. I think that's the I think that's the uh, the basic idea from what I'm getting to. You can see they've got all their social media presences down here. It's a pretty well laid out website. Solution Liquid Platform. Coin is launching a single globally sourced trading platform, Worldbook, with an associated suite of services, Prime Brokerage, that brings together the entire global network of cryptocurrency exchanges to enable the highest level of liquidity to all markets. Cool. Launching engine, fiat management. Okay, so it's a bit of a diagram there of how they how the cash flow works. Just having a look for the team. Cash token, here we go. Okay, we envision cash to be the preferred payment token of financial services, like the Bitcoin for financial services. Uh, as more financial institutions, fintech startups and partners adopt cash as a method of payment, the utility of cash will scale, fueling the fintech revolution. Trade cash on all major exchanges, pay with cash for all uh, coin services, okay. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. Coin, coin, I'm not sure. I uh, use cash as a payment token for other financial services. A uh, little disclaimer here, cash is not intended to constitute a security in any jurisdiction. It's interesting how this is starting to get put in. Uh, you are not eligible to, and you shall not purchase cash through its token sale if you're a citizen or resident tax or otherwise of any country or state where the purchase of cash or similar crypto token may be prohibited individuals, businesses, or other organizations who carefully weigh the risks, costs, and benefits of acquiring cash. That's good to have a disclaimer there. Token allocation and use of proceeds, 20% to management or and join shareholders, offered a public sale, 35%. 30% is to the community ecosystem, 15%. Okay, cool. It's got a breakup of the token distribution there, roadmap. It's actually... But been around for a while. Launched the uh, Coinex in quarter two of 2014. Offered margin trading, Kunex mobile app. Okay, so they've, they've actually got a, a fair bit here. Moved headquarters to Japan. Oh, I could have gone over and checked them out. 
new high, I was only over there a couple of weeks ago, new high performance data infrastructure, new high performance multi market. Okay, let's get down to their, okay, yeah, so their token sale was fourth quarter of uh, last year. So support for tokens and self service token listing on cryptos is, I'm not sure if that's been completed yet. It should have been, but it's not ticked off as, as red. What else have they got coming up? Direct market access and official coin liquid launch in quarter two. So they've got some like some events to look out for. Quite often you'll see prices actually run up to these events and then sell off into them. Um, so official coin liquid launches in quarter two of 2018. So that's coming real soon. Prime brokerage offering by the end of the year. And then they're gonna expand services to asset management investment banking in 2018. Okay. It looks like the uh, the primary focus is on different fiat pairings. I mean, that would that would actually give them a a really good point of difference in terms of exchanges. Uh, meet the liquid team. Uh, meet the team leading the liquid launch. Okay, so they've got the team here as well. You'd have to go and look into each of those individuals if you are looking to it. I, I need to understand, I think Cash is the the, 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 um, the crypto representative of this, of uh, coin. We'd, ha we'd have to have a look at that a bit more and understand exactly how that, that partnership works. Uh, let's have a quick look at the co-founder and CEO, Mike Kayamori, inspired by the innovative disruptive disruption of blockchain and digital currencies, Mike co-founded Coin in 2014 with Mario. Mike brings over 22 years of experience in investments, business management, IT, and venture capital across Japan, the United States, India, and Southeast Asia. Prior to Coin, Mike was a senior vice president at SoftBank Group, managing its Asia operations and investments with uh, Singtel and Bahati Group. He was also the chief investment officer of Gung Ho, Asia, the creator of Puzzle and Dragons. Before SoftBank, Mike was a senior director at Globespan Capital Partners, a Palo Alto based venture capital fund with over $1.2 million, uh, 2 billion, sorry, under management. Mike holds a Bachelor of Law from the University of Tokyo and an MBA from Harvard Business School. So some pretty impressive credentials there from one of the co-founders. Um, You've got Mario Gomez Luzada as a co-founder and CTO. So yeah, you'd have to go and have a look at each of these individuals. I'll quickly scroll through. Katsuya Kono, CFO. Okay, so we've got a Chief Strategy Officer, Chief Trading Officer. Directors and investors here as well. So a reasonable looking team. I think the um, I think all the fiat currency pairings offer us a really interesting point of difference for cash. I'd have to go and look further into it, but on the my initial instinct is it looks okay, it looks pretty good. It could be something that certainly could be integrated into business as they allow those pairings with fiat currencies as well. Let's see what the the chat has to say. So a bit of chat about Zill credits. I don't know anything. Getting back to old stuff. It's coming down to live chat now, guys. IOST. All right, quickly before I go then. So Bart.org. We'll have a quick look at this one. Superart.org is really bullish on ISOT. Uh, Just having a quick look. Fisher, did you know David, bong smoking guy, a good guy? Hey, gave Pivx a good rap on a vid. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I don't mind David, hey? And that was before he was, he said that Pivx is good. He got a couple of things incorrect on that video. Like, it's not a major or anything, but he's talking about the master node holders staking and how much you needed to stake. And what I just wanted to, for anyone watching, you'd be aware because you watch this show, 
you can stake one pivx if you want to you don't need a master node to stake um so yeah no he did give yeah no that's a real australian thing isn't it yeah no he did give uh pivx a good rap and it was good to see i think look i think the thing the reason i sit here too often and just shove pivx down your throat is because it's good technology I've, I've often said just go check it out for yourself it speaks for itself <laughs> But if you do have any questions, happy to answer them. Uh, the only way to trade 97% THC seeds imported directly from going. So, all right, I'm going to have a look at this thing you want, IOST, and then I'm going to head out. So anyone who wants to check out IOST, if it is on actual, it's if it's on coin market cap, is it? IOS token, here it is. I'm a little bit behind, so let's get back onto screen share. It's only going to be a quick look, superheart.org, because I am running out of time today still gonna to get my house sorted should be rented by i reckon by the weekend i'll start getting people through tomorrow anyway enough about my personal life let's have a look at ios token um it is a two cent token at the moment in fiat currency in us dollars 236 btc satoshis and 3800 vitalics It's the sort of time you want to buy according to the chart. <laughs> a lot of sideways action with a little bit of steady growth at the end. Nice to see. $170 million market cap trading on, oh, sorry, circulating supply of 8.4 billion IOST, uh, total supply of 21 billion. Big supply. Going with a big supply. Binance, Huobi, OKX, KuCoin, some good exchanges. Common hood, yep, good availability, solid. How long has it been around for? It's uh, been January 2018, new coin. Barely new coin to be launched to market. Had a massive spike as often they do and getting back down to say, yeah, it's getting back down to pre-parabolic <laughs> prices. So yeah, it could be an interesting option based on the charts. Let's have a quick look at what it is. IOST.io, it's taking me to. The secure, scalable blockchain that actually works. Well, there's a lot of them that work. <laughs> the IOS, the Internet of Services, offers a solid infrastructure for online service providers. It's high TPS transactions per second. Scalable and secure blockchain and privacy protection provide infinite possibilities for online service providers to serve their customer base. Um, white paper, technical white paper there, which is good to see. I'd say that's like a one pager, is what they're talking about there. Note, our institution only private token sale has been completed. No public sale will be held. Investors in China, US and Korea were not allowed. Check out our legal disclaimer for more details. The new pinnacle of throughput our innovative, efficient, distributed sharding EDS technology vastly improves scalability by dynamically pun uh, uh, petitioning the iOS network into subspaces via a secured bias-free stochastic process. I've not heard that word before, I'm sorry. Stochastic process. Perfect petitioning state for multiple groups handled in parallel. Uh, atomics, fast-grade commit protocol to enforce consistency among cross shard transactions, bias resistant distributed randomness, an innovative, effective and secure way to introduce unbiased randomness into the iOS network. Groundbreaking consensus mechanism. Uh, we designed a proof, proof of believability mechanism to eliminate the need for an energy hungry proof of work protocol, which stands as a barrier to blockchain scaling up for widespread adoption. Believably, uh, believability of a node is calculated based on c contribution and behaviors. Meanwhile, fairness is ensured with algorithmic randomness. That's interesting. I'd have to. This one looks like it's heaps more technical. Like I'm really going to need to take a look into it. iOS is a user friendly ecosystem for your next big idea. So it does look like it's a platform. Yeah. The apps and smart contracts, data storage services are the backbone of any ecosystem with HUDs. The, the ICO ecosystem provides a decentralized, secured, searchable, efficient, and economical way to store information. So it looks like I've got file storage on there as well. That's interesting. The app. 
fair and transparent feedback system. Users will have opportunities to provide feedback upon completion of the service. FTFS is designed to ensure all feedback is trustworthy. These are your team members, Terence Wang, Jimmy Zong, Elvin Tan, Okay. Cool. All right. So it's basically, it, I mean, it looks to be another a get me. Tell me if I'm right with this this really really brief uh, assessment of of that one superheart.org, but it looks to be a a network that can host distributed applications and also has file storage um, and claims to be pretty scalable and secure. So if that's if I've got that basically right, it's a it's a, a new network. Please let me know. <laughs> Coming back to the chat now. <laughs> so that's it's, it's screaming by. Um, I called your name today and talked about you to my son about surfing and being like water, like a wave, and supporting people. You're the ocean now. <laughs> we now uh, you are the power. <laughs> cool. Sell my foundation, not the crypto, duh. Uh, it's to raise money for charity. Oh, yeah, Google me and the superheart.org foundation. Yes. Oh, you meant on the show? All right, quickly before I go. Superheart.org. Ah, superheart.org foundation. Superheart. No, I don't know what it was. Oh, hang on. Yeah, here it is. I got it. It's on Facebook. I'm not linked up on Facebook on this, so I can only show you the home page, but let's just go finish the flat. Not yet. Not yet. Almost. Pretty much. I'm going to have people start coming through, through tomorrow, dude. Get some new tenants. If you're interested in a, uh, a room in Tweed Heads, please contact me. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look at Subhart Foundation. See, I don't know how much I can get just off this home site, but uh, Superheart has a goal, and that goal is to put hunger in the past. No one should ever go to bed hungry, thirsty, or sick. Hunger, thirst, and medical needs are being met due to the good works of Superheart. Please help get involved. Yeah, cool. Have you got some? Um, oh, I can't create. Not now. An account. Yeah, I don't, I'm not big on Facebook, so I don't even have it on this computer, dude. But oh, here we go. What what um what countries are you working? Super hot, man. I got I got mad respect for anyone doing charity work. Lived in Sri Lanka for a couple of years. Some people over there just have nothing, like literally nothing. Don't have water, even like access to clean water. Have you got um, crypto wallets set up for it? It's a good idea. That's all uh, on chain and really visible. Mm -hmm. Is that the right one? <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to check out for the day. It's been good to catch up again. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Superheart.org. Mad respect. Get over there and check it out if you're on fa Facebook, guys. I'm sure you can friend request or something like that. I'll even sign up to my Facebook account. Do a follow. IOST is taking off. Uh, get in now. God bless you all. <laughs> okay. Cheers, superheart.org. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass out. Probably going to pass out. No, I'm going to check out for today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Start doing the daily again. Like I said, at least five days a week. I might not do full seven, but be here for the convo. So if you want to get into a bit more 
in-depth crypto discussion. This is the place. I'll see you overall on Discord. Um, I got to catch up on what ICOs are coming out. <laughs> Let's get back into this and see if we can uh, have a good two thousand, as a good good a two thousand and eighteen as we had in two thousand and seventeen. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna peace out. I'll speak to you all tomorrow and later on in the day over on Discord. See you then. Bye.